So I just have on my heart this morning as I'm standing here, some of you are out of faith because you've been asking expectantly and nothing's happening. Um, I, I think it's, I've also been there where I say, Lord, we prayed for this thing and nothing happens. In actual fact, I look at the situation, sometimes it gets worse. So I'm saying, Lord, where are you? But then if, if I look back over the year, I think to myself, wow, the Lord's been here. So the specific thing that I'm praying for looks worse, but the other stuff is shifting. So you, you might be in that place where you're saying, but I've got so much faith in my God, why is something not happening? Sometimes good things take time. The plan that the Lord has got for you, perhaps the thing you're praying for, you messed it up. And a lot of times we do that. We mess up. And then we go to the Lord and say, please fix this. And we expect him to fix it like this, but we've messed up big time. I don't want to give examples, but there are examples out there that you can do. You can make financial decisions that are wrong. And then you say, Lord, why has this happened to me? But you've made the error. Okay, so uh, a few years ago, I hurt both my shoulders. I tore these tendons here. And the testimony was that the Lord healed me. I was standing here, and I couldn't lift my hands like this. It was just too painful, and the Lord healed me. So this pain came back. I said, Lord, but you healed me. And the Lord showed me, said to me, but it's, it's not your shoulders anymore. You're slouching. You're walking like this. And what's happening is it's pulling on your tendons. Walk upright. Stop slouching. My mother used to say, sit up straight. Stop slouching. That's a good thing. So I started to just do that and set myself now it might look funny because now I'm walking around like I'm the man you know <laughs> but I'm slouching so it's causing issues in my back so instead of the Lord saying you healed he gave me wisdom so maybe in the situation you're in if you just sat and listened for a bit the Lord might give you the way out but you're so focused on what you're saying you're not listening Bible says in everything, in everything, prayer and supplication. Everything, prayer and supplication. Now let me ask you this. The Lord's been leading me this whole year about relationships. Speaking to me about my wife and my relationship. My relationship with my family, my relationship with men, my relationship with everybody. What is my relationship like? So this is how most relationships work. The, most people talk. They want that person to listen. I, I'm going to give the young men a tip here if you're dating. Women like listeners. So they will say to their friends, yes, this guy listens well. eh?" Because that's what most women do. They talk. And men are listeners. That's why when you get into a relationship, the first two years are called a honeymoon period. And after that, the men start taking a stance and saying, I'm not taking this anymore, and I'm going to tell her what I want, and things start happening. Problems arise. Because now you don't listen anymore. Ladies, am I right? Okay. So what happens is, because you're in a, a mode of romance, you'll just be quiet and take any nonsense. Then the little two-year-old starts crying, and the nappies are in place. Now you start speaking out. I want, I need. And she goes, this, this is not the guy I married. So the relationship changed. Ladies, they get divorced, you'll find the man starts fighting back. I'm being straight here now. A lot of times when we want honey from ladies, we just keep quiet. Because we're looking for something sweet. Then things start happening and you start realizing, well... Two years down the line, three years down the line, things are a little bit different. You start talking back, and it creates friction. So that's how relationships work. And I'm thinking with Almighty God, what are we doing? We're speaking so much. We're talking a hind leg of a donkey. That's what they call it. How, what is the saying in Afrikaans? When you talk too much, no saying. He prat need to feel. And what happens is instead of listening to the Lord, we're talking, 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 commanding, telling, Lord, you should, you should. We should be going into a time where we speak the word of God, petition him, say, Lord, this is what I'm looking for, and listen. Because he might give you the wisdom for that. 
And so instead of just every time going into that time of prayer, Lord, you said I will prosper. Lord, you said you, I will prosper. And he's trying to show you how to prosper, but you haven't heard. So in all our relationships here, if you listen more than you speak, things will turn for the better for you. Woman, we know you're designed to speak. Okay. Men, if you just listened, you might get more honey. Am I right, Dot? I'm listening. Okay, so I'm not saying men mustn't speak, but there must be a time where you just listen. You'll hear there's two types of listening. People will say this. Dot said to me one day, you listen, but you don't hear. It's very confusing, Almond. It's called woman talk. Okay, that means you're sitting there, but your mind's somewhere else. Auntie Sari, does Bobby do that? She's just going sitting there. <laughs> Bobby, must I repeat myself? <laughs> okay, so it's like that with Almighty God. We're talking and expecting, but we're never listening. It's the same with a, with a relationship when you find a young person and you're in love. The Lord might be saying to you, listen, pull away here. This is not for you. But you're overwhelmed by what you see. And when that person's with you, because he's got the gift of the gab, he can sweet talk you, things happen. Ask the ladies here. They'll tell you. The sweet talkers, are they out there? Yeah, sure. Ask you don't know. <laughs> okay, I'm not doing a comedy skit this morning. Okay, so for the men... I got something for the men. I don't know if the women like these things, but I'm going to tell you what the Lord showed me in the week, and it's for the men. I was in a time of just counseling someone, and the Lord show, showed me an old airplane. Who's ever seen one of those airplanes from the First World War? They were pop riveted together very roughly. And I saw this guy sitting in this airplane in a seat that had no padding. He had the old leather helmet with the big glasses, and he was flying this airplane. And you know, that thing used to rattle that cables that held it together. But the fact was he was flying. And the Lord showed me, he said, the thing that lifts this airplane is not the engine. It's the wings, the air that goes over the wings. Because a lot of times we think it's the engine that pulls it. The engine just gives it speed, but it's the wind that gives it lift. Do you ladies know what I'm talking about? The shape of an airplane wing, the wind gives it lift. And I was saying, Lord, why are you showing me this? He said to me, the new airplanes of today work on the same principles. The only thing that's changed is, the, changed is the seating. The seats are more comfortable. The airplane's made better. But it's exactly the same principle of airflow. That's it. It hasn't changed. Just the seating arrangements have changed. The pilot can walk around in the airplane when he feels like it. And this is what the Lord is showing me. He says it's a picture of the church. You have some churches with a little bit of hard seats, no cushioning. And then you have these big ch churches with these soft seats. The Holy Spirit is there that does the lifting. He will lift you up in due time. Then the Lord added something to it. Who knows what a simulator is? It's where they teach pilots to fly. You sit in this thing and it weighs you around and you think you're flying. And the Lord said there's some churches like that, that create the lift, that you think there's lifting because there's lights, camera, action, sound, the band is on cue, perfect. You leave there thinking, wow, I feel uplifted. Go to a rock concert, you can feel uplifted. Have you seen people leaving a rock concert? Yeah, hey, they're dancing and singing. Who's doing your lifting in life? Is it the Holy Spirit that's lifting you? If you go to the book of Acts, 2,000 and some years ago, the Holy Spirit came. The Bible says they came. They were all in one accord waiting on the Holy Spirit. They were singing, praising God. And all of a sudden, the Bible says they sat down and waited. Because Jesus said, go and wait. I will send a comforter. What did they do? They went and started praising and singing. It's when they sat down and relaxed. When they, when they had done everything. When they had felt, listen, let's get into deeper praise and worship, he's coming. It's when they sat down, he arrived. So he sent the Holy Spirit at the time where they were waiting and listening. 
And many times we are in that place where we start singing, dancing, screaming, shouting, Lord, you got to come, you got to come. And you think it's your actions that brings the Holy Spirit. It's when he arrives when your heart is in the right place. It's when you're in a place of peace and acceptance just to say, Lord, come, Holy Spirit, here I am. You see, as I walk, the Holy Spirit is in me. The anointing I carry is in me. I just may be not recognizing it. You see that, that goosebumps you sometimes get when there's a nice song? There can be a counterfeit. It's that other place that you go to where, where you think, sure, I feel so good, the song makes me, it pumps me. I'll tell you a little story one day. One of my favorite songs when I was in the world was a song called Cocaine by Eric Clapton. Anybody heard it? Ladies, no, don't put your hands up. You're supposed to act holy and go. It's such a nice tune. But you're singing about cocaine. So I was driving Dot's car and Dot's car had some good sound in it, like heavy sound. And I, d I didn't have a CD in that, and I put the radio on, and that song was playing. I was like, wow. And I put it full ball like this. And I pulled into a garage. And the music was going there, and I looked like this, and there was a car of four pastors that I know sitting there. <laughs> they were looking at me. I was like, yo, sound off. <laughs> Listen, music can pump you. It can build you. It can do something within you that you think, you think that this counterfeit is the Holy Spirit. It's when you're on your own or when you're in a group of people sitting, waiting for the anointing to come. When somebody's speaking about Almighty God and something in your spirit says, hey, listen, you just feel, yo, this is, this is for me. The music that we do here is not music. It's not entertainment. Pastor Neil understands how to bring you into the presence of God. When you feel that, that is an anointing. He's not here to entertain you. And you need to start discerning and understanding when is it my flesh enjoying this or when is it the Holy Spirit that is speaking to my heart. We need to be very wise around these things. And it comes by listening. It comes by that relationship that you have at home with your husband or your wife, or if you're living at home with your mother, your father, understanding them, not frustrating them. You, are you guys getting me here? Perhaps you're married or you're gonna, you feel like you're going to want a relationship. Take this stuff to heart. I'm telling you there's something in it. Because the Lord's been showing me this. I'm a pastor. I should have this stuff down already. I'm still learning. I was talking to a friend of mine, and he said to me, yeah, I just, I just wish I could be like my pastor. I said, what do you mean? He said, no, this oak is so level-headed, eh? He's just got everything. I started laughing. I said, I don't know a man on the planet today that is not dealing with something. As I stand up here, I've got to get up here on this pulpit, and when you look at me, you've got to think, yo, that guy's got it together, eh? That's a lie. I'm also running this race. I'm also finding that there's place in my life that have, there's change that has to come. So just when you think, you oh, are got this, the Lord shows you something else. You're like, yo, oh, I didn't know that. When you've dealt with that, he says, what about this? When you've dealt with that, next step. Each of us is dealing with something somehow. And that stuff that the Lord is asking me to deal with, it happens when I sit and listen. Not while I'm talking to him. It's when I sit and listen and say, Lord, is there something you require from me? Hey, there's a list. I'm going to challenge you just now with a scripture. Because the Bible says in everything, in everything, petition and prayer. Did you pray about everything today? Everything. Let's go to that scripture. Somebody call me. Oh. Okay, I want to go to the scripture first. Philippians 4, 7. Okay, 
that says this. Philippians 4, 7, have you got it? Where's my words that I asked you to put up? Okay. Okay, so the last few weeks, the Lord has been speaking to me about next year's theme. This year, he said, going back to basics, starting afresh, doing the basic, simple things. And over the last few weeks, the Lord has been saying this to me, have I not said? So when I come to him, I say, Lord, I need breakthrough in this part of my life. He, say, he points at his Bible, at his word. He says, have I not said? And I was like, Lord, what do you mean? He said, I need you to refer to the word of God, to my word, over every cir circumstance in your life. So if you're going through a tough time and you're saying, Lord, financially I'm battling. Go to the word and says, doesn't he even look after the little mosses? Doesn't he look after the sparrow? Why are you concerned that he can't look after you? Have I not said, have I not said in my word? that I will take care of you. So ne next year, we're going to be focusing on the promises of God. We've got 52 weeks. I want to do 52 promises where Almighty God says, this is what I said. Have I not commanded? This is what I want. <laughs> so Philippians 4, 7 says this, and the peace of God, the peace which reassures the heart the peace that transcends, I'm reading from the Amplified Bible, so yours might be a bit different. The peace that transcends all human understanding. You see, when something happens and something bad happens, you should be the one that is in peace that says, you know what? My God says. When the Bible, there's some people that say all hell broke loose. Well, do you know that all heaven can break loose as well? When you start to pray about something and seek the Lord's face on something, all heaven can break loose on your situation. The thing is, what do you choose to speak over it? Do you say, Yo, all hell break loose? Or can you say, you know what, there was such a battle between heaven and hell, and we know the outcome, that heaven will win. It's what you speak. It's what you say that determines the outcome. If you're going to say, Yo, my tummy is sore. I think I got cancer. You cursing yourself. I got a doctor that, that I go to. He said, Pastor Kenny, to go to a doctor. Yes, when I'm sick, I go to find out what's wrong. And on his desk, it says there, your Google search doesn't match my degree. So many times you say, I've got a headache. Yo, I've got a headache on the right side of my head. They Google it. What can be wrong? Cancer. Yo, I got cancer. You go there and you've got a pimple on your head or something. <laughs> Stop preempting the worst thing that can happen. The worst thing that can happen to you today, what is it? Can I tell you the best thing for me? If I died, it would be the best thing. You might be, my mom might miss me, dot, I don't know so much. <laughs> for you, it would be the worst thing to have death. But for the person that dies, it goes to heaven. It's the best thing. So when these trials and tribulations come, I just say, hey, I live forever. This body is just binding me here for the time that I breathe my last breath. You have to change your mindset and change what you're speaking. Start to speak the word of God over your situation. I got a sore toe. Father, your word says, I have been healed. I'm waiting for the manifestation of this. When I was sick the last three months, the doctor still can't figure out, but I'm, I'm healed. The medication they gave me didn't help. It actually made me worse. But I'm healed today. So I'm saying, why did I have to go through that time of that illness? I don't know. But I'll tell you something. In that time, I draw very close to God. And a lot of stuff was revealed to me that I can't lay still. So I was laying still for 40 days just laying there. All the time just speaking and listening. Sometimes very frustrated, going to the Lord and saying, Lord, but your word says, your word says. In the Psalms, it says that I have got advantages over other people because you heal, you set free, and you deliver. I want my deliverance. So I started to speak the word of God over myself. It took a while. It came to pass. 
There's people here sitting this morning that have been healed because they said, you know, Lord, I need this. They took the word of God and started to speak it over their situation. So I want to ask you this morning, are you in a negative frame of mind or a positive? Have things got so bad that you're going, well, Lord, where are you? I've asked the Lord that a few times. I'm not embarrassed to say that. I said, Lord, I work for you. How can I get up behind a pulpit sick and say, look, the Lord heals. But I'm healed today. I can tell you that now. So what are you battling with here? Because I battled with it. So maybe you're finding yourself, you're in that battle. I was thinking of Dominica the other day. She lost her job, stressed, stressed out. Look how the Lord blessed you. If you were still in that job, you'd never found this job. And they've trained her for free. They, I mean, that's something that's powerful. You need to give your testimony one Sunday. Little things that go wrong, but the Lord is pushing you in a direction. You think, why is this thing stopped? Because he's opening another door. I've seen that constantly. Constantly. There, Pastor Neil. If you didn't have troubles, would you be here? Thank you, Lord, for answering prayers. Sorry, bro. <laughs> you might be here today. Somebody said to me last night, they were, they were suicidal, okay? I was not, they're not in our congregation. He said, things have got so bad that I'm living in Rosettenville. I said, join the club. <laughs> okay? Listen, can you imagine if I wasn't living here, I wouldn't be here. I'd be a pastor in the north, driving a nice car. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Whatever situation you find in yourself in now, what are you speaking over that situation? I can't do it. Then you're never going to do it. In the week, I saw a 91-year-old woman. 91. At the age of 70, she was a dancer, these ballroom dancers. She didn't like the music anymore that she was dancing to because there's nothing new. So she started to learn to play piano at 70. She composes her own music at 74. Okay, she's now 91. She still runs marathons. She does gym 45 minutes every day. Okay, she does yoga, which I don't like. She does yoga a half an hour every day. And she runs. Plays music, still does ballroom dancing. 91. I'm 50, I've got aches and pains. Okay, I'm lying. I'm 52 almost. So listen to this. What is your problem? Starts here. In everything, prayer and petition. Everything going to the Lord. What is a petition? You write something down, you say. Pray, petition, and listen. Thank you. We're going to get there. So I want something from my wife. Uh, Dot, I'd like some supper. What would you like? Chops and rice. Then I get pop and vos. <laughs> okay. I, I still get fed. Okay. Now she knows, ah, he wants chops and rice. The next night I get chops and rice. Okay. The petition has been made. If I fought with her, I get pop and milk. Okay. <laughs> So the Lord will look after you. Sometimes it's pop and milk. Where are you at? What is going on in there? The negativity that's there. We look at our country. Oh, Julius this, Julius that. Listen, my God, he won't allow it. I'm telling you now, something's going to happen in our country. We saw it in 1994, there was peace. Okay? They, you know... Every time Almighty God wanted to destroy a city, he would send someone to go and they would say, can we find one or two people that love the Lord? And, and usually there were some. He would remove those and then destroy the village. Do you know how many people love Jesus in South Africa? They love him. So do you think he's just going to say, I'll oh, destroy them? Destroy those people. He's not going to do it. He's not going to do it. So what about your life? Do you think he wants to destroy you? There's times that I've gone through a time of testing. You test. You know what a test is, Almond? It's when you can't have the book next to you. 
and the teacher's not there. You have to do it on your own. You have to show your faith. You step up in faith. You know, the Bible speaks about the poor having greater faith than the rich. What? That means there's a poor Christian. That poor Christian has got greater faith than the one with money. Then he says the one with money, when he removes the finance, they should be pleased. When he removes their wealth, they should be pleased. I don't like to hear that stuff. I like my comfort. I love my comfort. But let me tell you something. When you go through that time of testing, out on the other side, go read the book of Job. Something greater is waiting. And then when you go into that place of greatness, you and your mind has changed. You start looking after people. That when you start looking at people that are battling, you can say, oh, they're going through a test. Let me love them. Let me help them. Are you in a time of testing today? Do you know that some of the wealthiest men on the planet are as miserable as anything? They're miserable. Why? Because they thought that the finance is going to fulfill them. That's when you have the Spirit of God in you. The Bible speaks about this, the, the God of all peace. In a time of war, God of all peace. Are you in peace? Are you in peace with yourself? Sometimes men get to an age of around my age, they start buying Harleys, growing goatees, and getting young girls. Why? They, they, they don't know what it is. They're missing something. But when you have Christ in you, those things are, it's a nice to have a new car. It's a nice to have a new house. But if you don't have it, you'll be in peace. And if you're not bringing that petition to Almighty God and speaking to Him, and sitting and listening, you will be in a place of negativity. This is the God in the Old Testament that we serve. I want you to go to the book of Exodus 34, verse 6. Exodus 34. You see, you have to first understand who this God is that we serve. I was talking to a lady last week. She says to me, yeah, but can't we also talk to Mother Earth? Mother Earth. I said, do you know that Mother Earth spews out volcanoes and kills people? She went dead quiet. Because she believes Mother Earth is trees and beauty. I said, Mother Earth caused a tsunami that killed people. I said, do you want to serve a God like that? That spews out these things? We have a mighty God that created these things. We have to know and understand who he is, that when we speak to him, we have to know and understand his power. So when I say that Almighty God created the heavens and the earth, that is the God I speak about. If he created the heavens and the earth, surely the petition and the question that you're asking, he can answer. It's either he can do it or you're not sure. If you're not sure, I promise you, you're speaking to the wrong God. Because I've seen great and mighty things by my God. It says in Exodus 34, And the Lord passed by before him, and proclaim, the Lord the God, thy God is merciful, gracious, long-suffering, and abundant in goodness and in truth. That is the God we serve. He's patient with you, unlike some people, unlike your wife or your husband. He's patient with you. He knows your shortcomings. He knows that you get into a place of negativity. He will work through it with you. He is so waiting for you to get into faith. He's so waiting for you to say, you know what? For a long time I've dealt with this issue. I'm going to start trusting God again. Because I got to that place where I said, you know what, Lord? This is going on for too long. This is too long. I can't wait anymore. What have I done wrong? And what happens? Negativity sits in. My illness was not because I did something wrong. Did God make me ill? I don't know. The, the area that I live has got a lot of dust, a lot of pollution. It could be that. So I'm trusting Almighty God to strengthen my immune system so that I can carry on living in that place. I have to put my faith in him to change my circumstances. So what illness are you dealing with? What negative mindset are you dealing with? What about depression? Are you dealing with that? 
do you want to, should we do a list? Maybe you guys can shout out some stuff that's on your heart. Unforgiveness, what are you dealing with? What is there that you're dealing with that is keeping you from being in faith today? Ungratefulness, what else? Envy. How many, you can't all look like me. <laughs> what is it that you're dealing with? Are you looking at your neighbor saying, I wish I had? What is it? Self? Is it yourself that's in the way? Are you looking in the mirror saying, Lord, I should have been taller, prettier? I don't know. What is it? You have to come to a place where you say, you know what? Right now in this time, this body, this circumstance, I'm here. Only thing that can change is almighty God can do something in my life. The 91-year-old woman decided at 70, you know what? I'm not going to die young because she says she was young at 70. She made a decision to do something with her life. All of you here can do it. Every single one of you. And we've got some that are over 70, yeah? I don't want to point out because I might be wrong, but there's some that's over 70. Today, you can make a decision to say, you know what? I'm going to start walking more. I'm going to start doing something with my life. There's a South African lady, she's 85. She runs a marathon every single weekend. 85. What is your problem? Your mind. Get the word of God, put it in here, I promise you it will change your life. You can, my Bible says you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. We know that that's a spiritual, super spiritual thing. Eh? Physically, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You can do it. Put your mind to it. So when we're going into 2019, you're all going to make that list that you always make. Stopping eating cake, sugar, sweets. Don't even put those on there. Because you're just going to feel, yeah, man, I failed. The first day. Because you know what they do? Lulu, you know what they do? They make their list. But on the first, they say, no, no, I'm starting on the second. <laughs> because their first has still got cake left from Christmas and... Am I right, guys? So you fail on the first day. But you're okay with it, eh? Make a list that you can work at slowly. Don't demand it now. Make a list that you can work into. Amen. Okay, you have to read more. All right, so I want to challenge you this morning. What is that one thing this year? I spoke about this before. But I'm talking about a physical ailment. I'm talking about a mental attitude. You know, this politics that happened in our country, I can see the oppressive hand of Satan trying to press our country down. We don't have to receive it. We don't have to. When somebody says something negative, you can say, yes, but have I not said? Has my God not said, I will protect you? Has my God not said, I will make you prosper? Even in this time, in this land, I promise you, Christian men and women will prosper in this country. I'm going to prosper. I am prospering. I'm prospering right now. The Lord said to me, bold, we've been doing stuff. There's stuff happening. There's little businesses that we're opening. It has to come to pass. Why me? Why can't you do that? Why can't you say, I'm going to buy a bag of potatoes and split it and start selling it? You see, stop looking at the millionaires and wanting the millionaire stuff. Start looking at your circumstances, where you're at, and say, what can I do today? My brother Hellman does that. He walks around, he sees stuff on special. Should I give you a secret? Okay. He buys it and sells it for more. Makes a living. Why can't you do that? Simple. You just have to step up and say, if he can do it, I can do it. If that lady, lady of 91 can do it, you can do it. The only thing that's holding you back is you. Don't blame the devil. Let me tell you something about the devil. He's one person. Only almighty God can be everywhere at the same time. You blame the devil. We bind up the devil. We say, Satan, come out. Listen, you think the devil's here? He's not playing here. The devil's trying to push on somebody's buttons in America, places like that. 
You sometimes are oppressed by your own thoughts and you think it's the devil. Okay. Yeah. You have to make a decision one day to say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And many people give up because they don't have hope. He is our hope, our eternal hope. Physically, he will even help you to achieve things physically. But you have to want it. You have to crave it. You have to desire it. All effort is from you. He gives the talents. It's your effort and your time. How much time are you willing to put into a relationship when it's fresh? When we're starting out, how much time? How many text messages? How many chocolates? How many flowers? If your relationship's in a mess right now, start it over. Start it fresh. Start giving the roses, the chocolates, the time, the love. 2019, don't give chocolates because they're saying they're not eating that anymore. Okay. Start your relationship fresh. If you're having a problem with your children, start that relationship fresh. Remember the first day that you held that child. What were the thoughts on that child? What were your hopes and dreams for that child? That child might be falling right now. Start to remind yourself and that child of what the hopes and dreams are that you want for that life. So all the 70 years old and older, I'm telling you now, if you feel you're old and you can't anymore, I promise you, you can. I see it. If you're ill right now, I don't know what illness you de you're dealing with, Almighty God will and can set you free. You've got to put your hope in him. Can we all stand? Lord, we just read that you are gracious, you are patient, you are kind, you are waiting for us to step up in faith. You are waiting for us to pray that prayer, to put that petition forward. You're waiting for us to one day pray and listen and you will give us the wisdom that we need to press on in whatever we're battling with father right now in this place i ask that your holy spirit rise up within those that you're asking and challenging you're saying i want you to do this lord those that have lost their energy that have lost their energy in life, that have lost their zest in life, that today they start to say, you know what? Every single day, I'm going to get up and I'm going to start walking. I'm going to start doing something. You know, when you've got a pool of water, if you just let it lay there, it becomes stagnant and green. But if you move it and stir it every day, it will remain clear. So your body is like that. You need to stir it up, do something every single day. Your spirit is like that. If you're going to start leaving your spiritual walk and not pray, you're going to go into that place where you just become stagnant and green and full of algae. Father, I ask that your Holy Spirit ignite a passion in us that we start to seek your face in a different way in a different place. That we're not happy with where we're at. We want something new and something fresh, Lord. We want to start to reach out and start to pray and trust you, my God. I challenge each and every one of you here to make a journal of the prayers that you're trusting Almighty God for. Write down the things and the people that you're praying for and start to expect something. Father, we pray over this church. There's great things that we're expecting next year, Lord. We pray for more people to come, not just to fill seats, but people, men and women, young men and women, kids that will come here and make a change in our community, Lord. Raise up young leaders in this church, Father God. Lord, there's young people that are standing here. They've got such great ideas, they just don't know how to implement it. That they bring those ideas forward, sit and get counsel and say, can I do this? Will somebody here yeah, help me with these ideas? Father, right now in the name of Jesus, any curse of poverty on anybody here, any spirit that is binding up our future in, in, in any way, Lord God, anything that's been put against us, any witchcraft, any songomos that have been spoken over our lives, any generational curses, right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I bind it up. These things will not affect us. Father, if there's illness in the house, 
There's, I speak to cancer cells right now. I say in the name of Jesus, I bind you up. I see you will be oxygen starved. That thing will just die a slow death. The person that has the cancer in the body, Father, right now we speak life and long and healthy, wealthy life, Father God. Father, those that are in, in relationships that are toxic, Right now, we see that the Holy Spirit is the antidote. We speak life over that toxicity. Right now, we speak life. Father, those that are battling with depression and oppression, Father, we set them free right now. Even the medication that they're taking is making them worse, Father. Let them start to wean themselves off that stuff slowly but surely, Father God. We speak life over those people this morning, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Breakthrough in this place, Lord. Let it be known that Almighty God, through His Son, Jesus Christ, is still healing, setting people free, and releasing people of bondage, Father. Father, those that are battling with addictions, from eating disorders, from smoking, drinking, drugging, pornography father in this place right now i command that spirit that is oppressing them right now off them i set you free in the name of jesus christ of nazareth father i release their minds the chemicals that are in their body that is under balance father right now we speak life we speak balance in those people's lives lord in jesus holy name right now we pray lord Father, as we leave this place, we know that your Holy Spirit is with us, dwelling within our human bodies, this tent, Father. The Lord Jesus said, my house, this temple will be called a place of prayer. So Father, let every single person that can hear my voice this morning understand that Jesus lives within your heart. He wants you to be a place of prayer. He wants a constant relationship with you. He wants you to constantly speak to him. He wants you constantly to petition him. He wants you constantly to open the word of God and see the promises of Almighty God. Father, we bless every single person here as they leave, knowing that you are with them. You have angels encamped around them. In Jesus' holy name we pray, Lord. All God's children said, Amen. Amen.